hallelujah this is the day the Lord has made we'll rejoice and be glad in it when Moses asked God who shall I say sent me he said just tell them I am you know every time we say Yahweh Jehovah Rapha Jireh they are only manifestations of God I am just basically means that you don't have one name to tie him to he is who he is when you come to that situation God is God so when he says I am when you need him as healing he shows up as Rapha but Rapha is not his full name when you need him as peace he shows up as Shalom but Shalom is not his full name you can't you can't tie him to one place. He is bigger than the biggest. He is greater than the greatest. He is mightier than the mightiest. And he is your God. He is your father. He is your savior. He is the one who reigns, who lives in your heart. Who lives in your, who came and shed his blood that you may find salvation. Put your hands together and bless his name this morning. Praise the Lord. Father, we lift you up. We make great your name from the rising of the sun to the going down. Bless your people this morning. Minister to your people. Let your name be glorified. Let lives be transformed. Let people be challenged. Let fire be kindled in our spirit. To know you, to follow you, to walk with you, to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name. Shout a big amen. Shout another amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord, talking about I am. In the second service last Sunday, we were sharing on the covenant of God. In fact, two Sundays ago, we shared on the covenant power of God. One of the things God does by that covenant is that he gave us his name. So that when he gave us his name, it meant that he believed in us. Uh, I have an Apple iPad here. After Apple created it, they put their name on it. They are proud of their product. They believed in their product. After God saved you through the precious blood of Jesus Christ, he put his name on you because he believes you will succeed and that you will do well. Somebody hearing me this morning? So I believe that you will succeed and you will do well. Everyone wants to succeed, but not everybody does. But when you have God in you, then you are able to succeed. This morning we start a new series, and I believe it will bless you. It is a series titled, The Path to Greatness. The Path to Greatness. In other words, if God called you to succeed, it means in effect that from day one you were destined to succeed, made to succeed, made to achieve and, and therefore, if you can follow the counsel of God and the word of God, you will succeed. You will do well. Look at me. I'd like you to know this. Failure leaves a pathway that one can just say, the way this boy is going, he's going to fail. Success also leaves fingerprint. So that when you see the indices of the person's behavior, actions, what they are doing, you know that they will succeed. However, when it comes to becoming great in God, it's not only that footprint that makes one know that this person will succeed. We can also tell if a person will be great. God has called you to greatness. God has called you to fulfillment. God didn't call you to be ordinary. He called you to be extraordinary. God called you to reach the levels which you have never imagined. Probably your parents never thought about now I prophesy on you that you will get there and you will exceed if you believe shout amen. amen the bible says jeremiah 29 11 for i know the plans i have for you declares the lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you a future and a hope so our focus in this teaching and this message is on greatness someone say greatness Say it again, greatness. And by greatness, we mean knowing your purpose in life. 
and what God wants to do with you, where God is taking you, what you ought to have made of your life. Because you find the way some people carry themselves, the way they behave, it's like they just came to make up the number. Greatness means God making you big and giving you abundance. Somebody say, I receive. I say, say, I receive. Greatness means God making you big, giving you abundance, giving you all that makes life beautiful and awesome. Greatness means God giving you vastness, strength, enormity, immensity. You see, you can settle for some little corner of London and say, at least compared to some friends of mine, I'm not doing badly, but so if you are that kind, this morning's teaching is not for you. But if you are the one who is hungry for something bigger, for something greater, then get ready. You have to be ready because if you are not ready, you can't receive it. God bringing hugeness of his purpose into your life is what we mean by greatness. It's more than success. It's leaving an imprint. And the whole of today's teaching may be for one or two persons, but I pray that that hunger will be satisfied. The scripture we have read, which says, look at the plans I have for you. Good plans are not evil. To give you a future and a hope. It shows that you were set apart from day one for a special purpose. And even if you find yourself in the middle of crisis, do you know that crisis sometimes is what even reveals greatness? If you don't face anything, you never know anything. Some of us, for example, me in particular, until there is a major issue around matters, I don't think sharp. When the crisis comes, then that's when my mind works best. I begin to see 10 ways out of it. Three ways to do something. 20 ways to do. But when things are ordinary, I just go with the flow. So once in a while, God allows some crisis. Not all crises are from the devil. God allows some crisis so that the greatness in you will manifest. But what do people do? They run, to, they take cover. They look for a place to hide their head. They just want to survive this crisis and say, if, I, if this cup can just pass over me. You must use that life to bless others and bring God's purpose into establishment. Greatness is not thrown at people. It is available, but people have to grab it. For you to enter into that greatness, you have to, you've got to know that people have already analyzed you and they've categorized you and they have said you are going to fail. But I came this morning to let you know you will not fail. Oh, your amen is weak. In fact, they have a name for you. They have an idea about you. They have how they perceive you. They have a name they call you. They have a prediction. Sometimes people even have a nickname for you, which suggests the little box in which they put you. They either call you poor, broke, old, alcoholic, tired, you know, a, a, a child, no degree, divorced, single, depressed. You know, when people see us, sometimes the first thing they see is what they consider to be issues. But you must not let other people's box determine where you live. I hope I'm speaking to someone this morning. Praise the Lord. Because you sat in front of a doctor and after you gave a description of what you are going through, he says, ah, I can see you are depressed. I need to give you antidepressants. And you say, okay, thank you. So you have already been predicted to be in a box. Instead of you to snap out of some things, you allow other people to describe who you are. Or they use your family background and other things that they could summon to describe you, to describe who you will be in life. You have to make efforts to get out of that box they have put you in. And you are coming out. I said you are coming out with strength, with power, with glory, with dignity, with testimony. The path of, of greatness is what you are called to. That's where you will walk. You have to see the dream God has placed in you has been bigger than what they called you. You have to see it because if you don't see it, people, do you know... <laughs> 
<laughs> the interesting thing about life is that people will predict your failure, but when you succeed, they'll come and shake your hand. Then they'll come and celebrate you. Whereas they are the same people who were predicting she's going to fail. She will not do well. That thing will not work. Let's go and see Esther. Esther chapter 2 verse 5 to 8. Now there was in the city, citadel of Susa, a Jew of the tribe of Benjamin named Mordecai, son of Jair, the son of Shimei, the son of Kish, who had been carried into exile from Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Among those taken captive with Jehoiakim, king of Judah. Mordecai had a cousin named Hadassah, that is Esther, whom he had brought up because she had neither father nor mother. So she's an orphan. And she's being raised by a slave. What do you expect? Straight away in your head, you put her in a box. This girl who was also known as Esther was lovely in form and features. And Mordecai had taken her as his own daughter when her dad her father and mother died. When the king's order and edict had been proclaimed, many girls were brought to the citadel of Susa and put under the care of Haggai. Esther was taken to the king's palace and trusted to Haggai, who had charge of the harem. So here is a beautiful lady, but covered with the clothes of slavery. Everything wrong. Parents died, raised by her uncle in slave quarters. And where you are determines what grows inside you. It determines even the language you speak and the way you see the world. Where you are determines how you perceive yourself. During the 1984 crisis in Ethiopia, when there was a serious famine, it was so terrible. I mean, the BBC was covering it every day. They would hover over kids. You see children removing the paint on the body of paint cans to eat and catching flies to eat. One of such kids was taken to America. A lot of American families adopted some children. I can't remember if some were adopted here. I can't remember. I can only remember one boy whose case I followed. He was four years old during the crisis, dying so skinny and emaciated and eating flies. Ends up with a family in the United States and ends up with, with uh, graduating summa cum laude. That's like first class from Harvard University. So you see, greatness is not about just the location. It is about what is inside you. You carry greatness. You were not created for shame. You were created for testimony. So you have to see that you are a star while the world calls you a slave like they have called Esther, because her name means star. She is a star, or rather she was a star, but she was put in the slave quarters, wore slave clothes, given slave names, and in those days, slaves had their ration. The kind of food they were given was not the best of the food. But you see, destiny can still rise out of you. Greatness can still rise out of you. So let's look at it this morning. Number one, if you don't see the potential of seed in yourself that God has ordained, God has ordained someone else to recognize the seed of greatness in you. Esther may have not seen it, but Mordecai knew that this girl in my care living in the slave quarters when they called for ladies from across the world because Babylon ruled the world. They call for ladies who will come and be the queen. He saw a queen in a slave girl. People came from Europe. People came from Africa. People came from Asia, from the Middle East. All of them were ready. They were being prepared to stand in front of the king. But Esther carried destiny. Somebody say destiny. Because you see, God ordained her for such a time as this. That one day she will be the one used to deliver the children of Israel from being exterminated in the land of slavery. What's the name of the man who was trying to destroy them now? Haman, who was ready to destroy the Jews. But you see, if they were destroyed, there would be no Messiah. So God had planted this girl in slave quarters. Where you start is not where you will end. You will only end in testimony, end in greatness, and in favor, 
and in blessing, shout a powerful amen. amen. The people God has ordained to see greatness in you include your parents. There are people surrounding you to help you see your future. Guardians, grandparents, cousins. That's why you find the people who are ordained to see greatness in you. They keep putting pressure on you so that the goodness in you will manifest. Esther had Mordecai. He was her cousin and he, was the, and he saw the beauty in her that would have made her a queen over the whole realm. At that time, Babylon ruled the whole world. The whole world. Babylon ruled across the world. He saw what she can become when no one else saw it. I pray for you that the persons God have ordained to push your destiny out will be there for you. And you also be sensitive to listen to them. Somebody pray and say, I receive. You have to, number two, you have to learn to turn difficulty, see, difficult situations around. So the first one is the persons God have ordained and put around you in order for the greatness in you to manifest. It takes somebody believing in you for the beauty, the blessing, the favor to manifest. Number two, you have to learn to turn difficult situations around. You can run away from difficult situations. You can also face it. Shakespeare made a statement that is so powerful. He said, great are the uses of adversity. You wonder why will adversity be a good use? But you see, great are the uses of adversity. He goes on and says, for in it we find tongues in trees and sermons in water brooks. That even in the middle of a tree, you will find some good thing. And in a water brook, you will find a sermon. It, David concluded, he said, it is good that I was afflicted. It was good that I was afflicted. That I may appreciate your statutes. David was the one most neglected by his father. They pushed him to seek God. And in the seeking God, he found God. May you find him. Find his power. Find his greatness. Find his blessing. In the name of Jesus. People who push you will push you to testimony. They will push you to destiny. Every one of us faces limitations. But there are people who sit down, fold their leg, and talk about limitations as if they cannot overcome it. If you face a crisis, you've got to know how to ride the crisis. You lose a job, look for another one. Don't sit down and be waiting for somebody to just give you something. Go get something. Some young lady, her father passed away. Her father's from my hometown. And she, oh, hey, 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 hey. My dad said, if we face any situation, we could call upon you. After a while, I noticed, I said, hey, you and your husband don't work. She said, hey, her husband has been called to full-time ministry, not to do any secular work. Oh, really? You like secular money, but you cannot do secular work. You always like to collect, but you don't want to be corrected. So for you to keep collecting without being corrected, you will end up without connection. Wouldn't listen. Still in the same situation until they lost one of their son from just no money to buy a simple drug. Every day the landlord is chucking them out. The guy is still saying, the Lord said I should not do secular work. In which Bible? The same Bible says, let him who does not work not eat. This same Bible shows us that when Paul enters any city, he has a PhD in law. He's a trilinguist. But when he enters any city, no church to help him, maybe with accommodation or feeding, Paul will start a work he once learned, tent making. He'll start making a tent for people who need a tent so he can have money. He's a lawyer. This is an ex-senator. And you say, we have been told not to do secular work. No. Stay there and be waiting for angels to bring bags of food. There's a lot of people never allow the greatness in them to manifest. They don't realize that greatness actually shows up when you have allowed the pressure of life to bring the goodness in you out. I see you achieve. I see you succeed. I see you rise. Enter levels you've never imagined. 
in the name of Jesus. So when life hands you lemon, you turn it to lemonade. When life hands you challenge, you turn it to a testimony. When life hands you a chicken, turn it to a chicken sandwich. You know, because, <laughs> I mean, when you, you could see the chicken, I said, that's just a chicken going on. But you can also see your sandwich for the day. Praise God. Or whatever you want to do with the chicken. Chicken biryani, tandoori, whatever it is. Or chicken suya. When life hands you challenges, you must realize this. You see, and one, somebody has said some people had greatness thrown on them. Many times, if they don't lose it, the next generation does. That's why one person struggled, made wealth, handed it to his children. But the children never been taught to go through adversity. They blow it. And the third generation becomes poor. They begin to tell story. Because they don't know. You see, let me tell you, failure is easier to manage than success. Because with failure, after a while, you can just find a way to just survive. But with success, you got to know how to keep the fire burning. With greatness, you got to know how to keep the greatness burning. That's why some people, they just like, they don't want anyone to criticize them. They don't want anyone to talk about them. They don't know that even those who talk about you, when you now succeed, they celebrate you. How many are ready to be great in God? You shall be great. So to excel in life, you learn to take the gift in you and maximize it. Somebody scream, I'm gifted. Or say it like you mean it, I'm gifted. God never creates any junk. The last creation of God on the sixth day is man. When he created the first five days, the Bible says, and he saw that everything he created was good. But on the sixth day, when he created man, the Bible says he looked and he saw that what he created was very good. God created you for greatness. God created you for achieving. God created you for succeeding. God has a deposited gifts in you. Oh, you are loaded. Somebody say, I'm loaded. You are a fully loaded gun, ready to achieve, ready to succeed, ready to go far, ready to make a difference. Your, your, your greatness could be through your love for children or helping elderly people or speaking like I'm doing or taking care of your husband. Greatness is greatness. There are people whose greatness is that they raise champion children and their children went on to bless the world. You could never talk of that child without referring to the parent who raised them. Praise God. I said praise God. There are people whose greatness is in, is, in, is in prayer and warfare. He used to be a preacher who rose out of New York called Charles G. Finney. Charles Finney was a man who waited on God in fasting, praying, and when eventually he started a revival in, in, in New York, he was a crazy kind of Revival. We need it in 2023. When Charles Finney will enter a factory, the people couldn't work, they fell under the anointing and began to repent and began to cry to God. The power of God moved with him anywhere he went. But then later they found that it wasn't Charles Finney. It was another man whose only duty was to be on his knees when Charles Finney goes to anywhere. It was called Father Nash. So it became known to be said, no Father Nash. No Charles G. Finney. You're calling maybe greatness in that area that you supported the people who were your love with your prayer. May you be great. I say again, may you be great. So how does it come? Number three, find the exit from the excuse freeway. Some of us are traveling on the motorway called excuse. We have reasons why we're where we are. Oh, you don't know. My mother, my father, the system, my teachers, the prejudice in the United Kingdom, the this, the that. <laughs> when I was a kid, they had one, the, one of the dumbest songs I ever had in the primary school we went to. One teacher taught us a song that said, Adam and Eve, you do me so. 
Adam and Eve, you do me so. I go to school, but I always fail. Adam and Eve, you do me so. Everything you, you experience that is bad, Adam and Eve did you so. What a lie. You did yourself so. Because success or failure is a choice. Say with me, success is a choice. Failure is a choice. Say it again, success is a choice. Failure is a choice. Because you see, you can become bigger than where you came from. You can become so big, they can't place you. May that be your testimony. Bigger than the home you came out from. In fact, that they'll be looking and saying, you mean you came out of this place? I prophesy that will be your testimony. So find the exit out of excuse. Stop making excuses in life. It's so easy to make excuses. That one is the reason I failed. This one is the reason I failed. If a door shuts, open another. Excuses are often the crutches upon which uncommitted people run. Excuses. There are people who, you know, forgive me, maybe it's my opinion. Sometimes you are watching Olympic games, you are watching Adley's run. You could tell this guy knows that he's not going to make it. So suddenly you have a muzzle pull that is not a muzzle pull. You just look at this one, this one, this muzzle pull. Why didn't, if you were in front, if you were leading the, I've never seen the person leading the pack get a muzzle pull. It's the one that is maybe number five or six. He suddenly holds his leg. Get out of the way. But do you know there's success sometimes even in failure? So in 1969, I think it was, Mexico Olympics, they go to run. They are doing the 26-kilometer marathon race. They have to run inside town. They've created a pathway for them to run and then come and finish inside the stadium. So everyone who ran the marathon had come. They've chosen the first, the second, the third. Others who did not make it, they've gone to look for a place to sit. But suddenly, 45 minutes after the marathon race was over, they see a man running in from Tanzania. He was the one representing Tanzania. He was still running. The whole press stood up. The whole stadium stood up, giving him as if they are celebrating his failure. Clapping and clapping, celebrating him until he reached, the guy ran until he reached the final point. All the journalists put their microphone in his face. They said, the marathon race ended 45 minutes ago. Why didn't you just melt away somewhere? Aha. He said, my country, Tanzania, did not send me this far to melt away. They sent me to finish. Even if I finished last, I had to finish. I think that guy won. If you ask me who was the one who got first, second, third, I don't know. But I know the man from Tanzania. Why? Because in his failure, we see greatness. It's better to fall and make it than to sit down and give excuses. And there are too many people, too many people who look for easy ways out. Don't let your children choose easy courses, easy things. You get people all the time who are looking for easy ways out. And you can also see some people in the midst of their setback, you know, this one carries the seed of greatness. Praise God. I see you succeed. I see you become great. Excuses cause you to cover up. You cover up life. Excuses, it is time to wake up and stop making excuses. And stop looking for cheap ways out. Find the exit out of excuse free way. Mordecai could have had the excuse of having the care for Esther and miss her destiny to save a nation. He could have just said, well, she's a slave girl. They're asking for queens to show up. The daughter of the king of so-and-so, the king of Arabia, the king of so-and-so place, the king of Saudi, the king of Europe, the countries of, of Cyprus, of Greece, have sent their daughters, beautiful girls, that have worn the best of clothes, clothes that you almost cannot describe. What will this slave girl do? But he saw beauty in her ashes. He saw greatness even in the midst of where she was. Do you know there are always times God will send somebody to believe in you. May God send such people. And may they push you to your greatness. 
you will not die a cheap death. You will become a testimony. You will shake your world. Make a difference in the name of Jesus. The only way to get off the excuse freeway is to take full responsibility for yourself. And even including your mistakes. If you made mistakes, look yourself in the mirror. Don't bang God's table. God, why did you allow this to happen to me? Maybe he was giving you signals. You didn't want to listen. Maybe he was showing you. You didn't want to listen. And maybe this thing you call a crisis is part of your process to reach where you are going. Good are the uses of adversity. In the words of Shakespeare. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes pressure will bring out greatness. Bring out testimony. Will make you discover your compassion. Do you know that if you've never been through serious lack of food, you probably don't feel compassion for the hungry? But when you've been through it before, you know what it means not to have food when you've done everything? Your heart yearns. Go and check. If you find a person who probably loves to empower people to succeed financially, they've known poverty. Wealthy people just think they should keep quiet and keep it in their club, in their society. So whatever you are passionate about may be an indication of the destiny you carry. Please don't settle with, I now have a house, food to eat, clothes to wear. What else do I need in life? You need to make a difference. Because that is success, but it's not greatness. That is success, but it's not significance. You are called to be more than successful. You are called to live a significant life. Someone say significance. Please say it again, significance. Can you see, Esther is not the only girl in the slave quarters. Esther is not the only one whose uncle worked in the slave, in, in, in the palace. But Esther was one person, because see, the interesting thing about the children of Israel is that even in their name sometimes, their destiny is revealed. She's called a star while she lived in a slave quarters. So it means the cloud of the quarters could not hide the beauty of the star. Don't let anything hide who you are. There is a destiny to you. And you can just tell sometimes when people are called to greatness, change your excuses by accepting responsibility, by doing the things you've never done before. Develop a plan to build on your strength. Because you see, you can tell yourself, oh, you see uh, where I am. I could have been in a better place. The reason I'm where I am is this situation that came upon my family. So when it came, what did you do? What did you do? Praise God. I found that in fact it is people who have been through something sometimes that know how to manage great things, manage businesses, manage favors, manage opportunities. They know how to, they, they don't want to go back where they're coming from. Change yourself. Change and, and things will begin to change. Then finally say goodbye to yesterday. Say goodbye to yesterday. Because you see, if you don't say goodbye to yesterday, you get stuck. To move forward into greatness, you must learn to say goodbye to yesterday's tragedies, to yesterday's baggage, to yesterday's challenges. The problem of the, of the past impacts you in two ways. The past can break you down. And the past, the past also can make you break through. It can either break you down or make you break through. Is somebody hearing me? The past can break you down or make you break through. One of the biggest producers of plastic spoons and plastic plates in the United States of America is a man called John Huntsman. Huntsman, Huntsman, H-U-N-T-S-M-A-N. John Huntsman was a believer. And God spoke to him that through this industry of making plastics, it was going to prosper him. Then suddenly a crisis came. He lost everything. 
So he was going to give up. And his wife now reminded him. You said God said. That this is your source of prosperity. Can God lie? Or you didn't hear God. When he now remembered that he heard God clearly. He didn't make it up. That it must have been the error of man. Or whatever caused this crisis. It's not God himself. He went back. He ended becoming what? $15 billion. Matter of fact, he was one of those who ran for presidency in the days when Obama was running. So out of his crisis came forth greatness again, wealth again, testimony again, until he ran for presidency of his nation. You can sit down and take for granted and you can break through. May you break through. I say again, may you break through. Mordecai didn't look at the fact that Esther was an orphan. He entered her into a beauty contest. You know, some people will never let you rest. All they remind you is the trouble they have seen. All they talk about is the challenge they have seen. And whereas you could so make up your mind that I may have seen challenges, but I'm not going to die there. He didn't let her past paralyze her future. He made up his mind to push her into greatness. It's time for you to be loose from every infirmity that limits your future. I see you great. I see greatness coming on your house. Great testimony. Your past will not stop your future. But you must acknowledge the pain of the past. You must be able to face it. I say, yeah, I've been through some things. Then you must forgive the people from your past. Let go. Let go. Let go of people who have hurt you, called you names, trampled on you, gave you rotten food. Go back and bless them. We lived with people who gave us rotten food. I lived with a woman who when the food became rotten, she wouldn't let us throw it away. She said, I bought it with money. Wouldn't let her own child eat it. She said, we must eat it until it's finished. I mean, you, many of you will know the food called Gary. It had turned brown even before you use it. And so what, whenever you ate it, it, look, it looked like, uh, it looked purple or brown. And you could tell this thing is poison. But she said, you can't, it must not be thrown away, you must eat it. How we survived it, only God knew. And then you ate all that. And one day I left her place, got born again, called to the ministry. And God said, go and bless her. So I traveled to go and bless her. And then about four or five years ago again, God said, hey, travel another five, kilo, five, five hours. Go and bless her. I went there, blessed her again. Went with a lot of police escorts. She's looking. Oh, I'm sure she's saying in her heart, this is a person whom I so persecuted. But I blessed her. Is there anything she needed? I was ready to do for her. Forgive the people in your past. Forgive yourself for your own failure. For the mistakes you've made, stop beating yourself. You see, sometimes, some people beat themselves when God has already forgiven them. The blood of Jesus has already cleansed your past. Somebody scream, the past is gone. Say like you mean it, the past is gone. You need to be ready for God to raise you. Then release yourself and move into the future. Release yourself and move into the future. And lastly, this morning. Don't dare miss your future. Don't dare miss your greatness. Be bold. You cannot afford to miss any opportunity that comes up to propel you into your reality, into your destiny. Mordecai saw the opportunity to enter, to enter Esther into the beauty contest and she became a queen. Esther almost missed the opportunity to save a nation but she dared not miss it because she too, when she now reached the place, I don't know, the palace may have overwhelmed her. The beauty of it, the blessing of it. I don't know if you've ever been in that kind of a place. You are so blessed with something. You are waking up every day and say, somebody wake me up and tell me this belongs to me. If somebody, I, I say, have you ever had that kind of a Let me see your hand. You're saying, you mean this is my blessing? You mean this is my house? You press the button, it worked. Hey, hey, thank you, Jesus. But then Esther probably had read that place and her uncle had to say, you're hiding in the palace. They are about to kill the Jews and who knows 
Maybe that's why God smuggled you into the palace. Because he warned her not to tell anybody she's a Jew until the fullness of time. Because some of us, we always announce to everybody all our secrets and all our life. Some things you need to keep until the right time. Some things are not for everybody's ears. Some things need to wait. She faced her inadequacies. The Bible says that she now told her uncle, go and announce to all the Jews to fast and pray for three days. Dry fast, no eating. I will now go to the king and announce to him, if I perish, I perish. You can look at me. In, in, in entering levels of success and greatness, there is a level that requires an unusual boldness. Taking a step you've never taken. Putting all your cards on the table. I guess that means if you play, is it poker? I don't know how to play it. Last time I played card was 51 years ago. Can you believe that? Uh, our own salvation, we were so saved. We didn't even play Ludo. Jesus, man, maybe one of these days I should play Ludo. I don't even know how to play it anymore. We were so saved, we felt it was a waste of time. But it's leisure. Enjoy your Ludo. Don't go home feeling guilty. Praise God. She was, she, 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 she felt something had to happen. She, as she said, I'll go to the king and I'll announce to him. Praise the Lord. You see, kings at that time, unless they invited you, you didn't go. She fished out the solutions. She finalized her decisions. And she said, if I perish, I perish. I'll go to the king. I close by telling you, everyone is destined for greatness. But if they reach there, it's another matter. Some people die before they get there. Some people don't have the boldness. Some people don't have the reach. But do something today on your way to your greatness. Listen, don't be too dignified that you can't get a job. Don't be too dignified that you can't humble yourself. Don't be too dignified that you cannot start somewhere. Because it is in the process of your starting that somebody might discover you. And then they push you to whom God called you to be. Young men, young women today. Never look down at your parent. Appreciate. Know you stood on their shoulders to rise. Celebrate your parents. Thank God for them. They paid a price. And then not just that. As you are rising, things may happen. There may be setback. Use the setback for a comeback. Is somebody hearing me? During the week, a young lady walked up to me in our, in our estate which we are building. I had never experienced something like that. I'd always seen her. We have this estate where people are working. We have about 400 workers there doing laborers' job. And these two girls who work as laborers, I thought they were just unschooled, played with their life, and now they work here. One day I see them working with the road contractor. Another day they are working with uh, the people who are building some of the apartments. Another day they are actually working with us direct. My staff hired them. As we're building the water display place, I just, they agree, oh, hi. I'm thinking, whatever brought this ones to come and be laborers here. As I was about to enter the car, I think maybe Wednesday, I'm not sure now, or Thursday, one of them dared to, I think she had gone to ease herself and she was walking past the car. She stopped by the car to greet. She said, good afternoon. I said, good afternoon. Are you okay? She said, yes, I just thought to greet you, sir. The English was very nice, very correct. It was not uh, laborer's English. I said, what are you doing here? Then she answers, I'm a graduate of environmental sciences. Uh, as soon as I and my friend graduated, we decided to come to Lagos to come and hustle. They called looking for hard work hustle. I'm, I'm enraptured. And at the same time, I'm hearing God that this girl is a carrier of destiny. So how did you end up here? She said, we're just walking past. And we saw that laborers were working and we decided we'd join them. 
who are you? My father is a pastor. The things are hard for him. And uh, I decided that I'll come here to support them. How old are you? She's 25. Now I like to imagine a 25-year-old London girl. Never. She'll go and queue at the Citizens Advice Bureau and tell them what she needs. I need two pairs of shoes, man. I need two trousers. There's no Citizens Advice Bureau in this girl's country. I'm not, I, I was so touched. I said, so where do you live? Jesus, man. Jesus, man. Somebody had built an illegal house on one of our plots. And since we fenced it, the government is supposed to come and pull it down. But we're going to give that person money so they don't go and malign our name and say, I built a house. And they pulled it down in Pastor Matthew's estate. She's not entitled. They built it on our land. So they've accepted that we'll give them something. But before we do so, these people live in that abandoned building. No light. I tell you, until I got home, I couldn't handle it. I just, it, it's, it just so struck me. I have three granddaughters. I'm just too scared that they will ever go through that kind of valley of shadow of death. To live in a house without light. With these three or four hundred, forgive my French, sexually starved guys. Jesus, man. And they're not afraid. And she's a child of God. And you could tell the hand of God was on her life. It was, I, I became very sure that she carried destiny. I said, do you have a telephone? So if I want my, if you could give my driver your telephone number. She said, I have no phone. I had to sell it to pay for my brother's uh, exams. Jesus. Now, in my opinion, having been through valleys in life, I see indices of greatness. You could sell your phone. How many girls will sell their phone that they put all kinds of things around it? There's a chain around it. There's a purple uh, uh, holder. What else do ladies put around their phones? Talk to me, talk to me. You know, some have it in a Louis Vuitton. Let me see what is your own phone. <laughs> this girl sells her phone her brother's education and she sends money to her dad and mom who are pastors of an indigent small local church I had to not cry in her presence I had to drive away so I had to take some money off. <laughs> my driver messed up that day he should tell me before we leave home so I can carry my car to buy petrol he didn't tell me I usually will carry a lot of money because somebody will beg for money somehow. So I'd given him all the money to pay for petrol or the whatever is left on me can only buy a second hand phone. So I had to take out the money. I said, take this, go buy a second hand phone. And then send your CV to one of the engineers here. She truly read environmental sciences. And I was asking, why didn't you do regional planning? We could have just hired you as our town planner straight away and drop all this... Uh, laborer's job. You can see how a shovel, man. Skinny but carry shovel. I say when our friends are opposite, one is skinny, one is big. <laughs> the other one read the uh, laboratory technology and has done auxiliary nursing. And they're here because they believed in dignity. They believe they carry greatness. There's greatness in you. There's destiny in you. And the destiny you carry will not fail. I stand on this altar today. I prophesy unto your life. The greatness God called you to is who you will become. You'll be great in life. Great in your calling. Great in your destiny. Great in your purpose. Everything you lay hand will work. Everything you lay hands on will work. The purpose of God for your life will become reality. The call of God on your life will become reality. Greatness manifests by favor. May you walk in favor. May you operate by favor. May the favor of God be on your life. May it rest on you. May it surround you. Everywhere you go, may you manifest the favor of God. 
Anything you are doing now that carries no favor, God will deliver you from it. I pray for you, may favor profusely abound around you, abound for you, abound in you, in the name of Jesus. From this day, may God's favor be immeasurably great in your life, limitlessly great in your life, surpassingly great in your life. May the hand of God lift you up. I speak into your life today, may you know supernatural increase. May you know promotion, restoration, honor, increase in your asset, greater victories, recognition. The part of a just man shines, may your part shine. Our teaching today was becoming great in God. May you know divine prominence. May you know preferential treatment. May you know your petitions granted. May policies and rules of the land change for your sake. May the blessings of the Lord never leave your house. May the hand of the Lord be on your life. Battles you have won, battles you have won will not rise again. And even the ones you have not won, God will fight for you. You will have a testimony. The word of the Lord will become the reality of your life. I see you great. I see you great. I see you great. I see greatness rising in you. So shall it be. You will have testimony. I declare and decree you will have testimony. The hand of the Lord will be awesome on your life. In Jesus name. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. Bless the Lord. 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 Praise God. I'm going to serve the communion first before we give our offering this morning. And as a communion comes with a word like this, the body of Jesus broken for you, the blood of Jesus shed for you, may this affirm, confirm your victory in Jesus. I said, may it affirm, confirm your victory in Jesus. For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had broken it, he gave thanks and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you do this, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. Let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Father, bless the bread we eat, which is your body broken for us. Bless the wine we drink, which is your blood shed for us. Let it bring healing. Let it bring hope. As we partake in covenant relationship with you, we declare our victory. We speak our testimony. We speak our healing. We speak our health. Thank you, Jesus. Let today be the beginning of victory for somebody. The beginning of testimony. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. When they bring it to you, make sure you partake in the bread, partake in the wine. Begin to speak your desires, your healing. Your deliverance in the presence of the Lord. Begin to speak it. Praise the Lord. Oh, victory in Jesus. I've taken another key there. My Savior forever. He washed me and loved me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him. And all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He washed me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and oh, my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He loved me and bought me. With this redeeming blood, 
He loved me ere I knew him And all my love is to him He plunged me to victory Beneath the cleansing flood I heard an old, old story How the Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me and then I cried Lord Jesus come and heal my broken spirit and somehow Jesus came to me and wrought the victory oh victory in Jesus my Savior forever he washed me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Father, we speak your victory in the life of your people your testimony in their life. No weapon formed against them prospers. Every mouth that rises in judgment shall be condemned. Victory upon victory, testimony upon testimony, healing upon healing to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody shout a powerful amen. greatness starts and we begin to serve the Lord with everything we have the tithe and the offering honors God it honors God it honors God you cannot experience the favor of the Lord the blessing of the Lord if you do not have the victory of knowing that my tithe belongs to God it is not mine my offering belongs to God it is not mine 